This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome, dear friends, to The Science of Magic, a program combining the science and magic of today's leading topics to co-create new solutions and hopefully promote evolutionary thinking. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring trauma and the wisdom of the body. Align with the earth and your body will tell you what she's saying, my old teacher instructed. I'd ask him how he knew the weather was about to change. There was not a cloud in the sky, and yet he informed me we had to bring in firewood for the upcoming storm. It was the beginning of my education on the amazing connection between our physical body and everything else, and the wisdom to be found there. It ended up being quite a journey, as first I had to clear all the trauma from my body so I could wake up and once again feel what it was trying to tell me. Our bodies are the link between physical and the divine. It's through our bodies that spirit is channeled into the world. Our bodies also serve as a personal access to esoteric information. Through listening to the messages of our bodies, we can find safe passage through any situation. Why have we become so disconnected from our bodies? When did we forget them? How can we once again become attuned to these faithful servants we live in? What do they have to tell us? Our guest this hour has done some interesting study on the subject. With us to explore the wisdom of the body is Suzanne Sherlock Derna, the author of Reclaiming Your Body, Healing from Trauma, and Awakening to Your Body's Wisdom. As one of the world's leading authorities on conscious awareness and its transformational impact on the healing process, she's been empowering people for over 30 years to experience joy in each moment. The practical tools and skills she teaches have helped people all over the world improve every aspect of their lives. Her website HealingFromTheCore.com. Suzanne, thanks for joining us on the Science of Magic. Thank you, Gwilda. What drew you to um, researching the wisdom of the body? Well, as I talk about in the very beginning of reclaiming your body, um, I had some experiences myself when I was young that taught me that my body was actually trying to signal me on a regular basis. Uh, probably the the most rude awakening was when I was strangled by someone that was a good friend who was crashing on amphetamines when I was 17. I had no idea what was going on with him, but my gut was very uneasy in being with him that evening. And I, I just couldn't, in my mind, think of any reason to leave the circumstance. We were just sitting talking uh, together by ourselves. And, and so I didn't leave, and it almost cost me my life. And once I, I worked through the trauma of that betrayal, of everything else that went on around it, I realized one of the, the exciting thing was that my gut had known 20 minutes, half an hour before it occurred, that something was coming that was not going to be a good thing for me. And if I had listened to my gut, 
and not listened to being a polite, good girl, being a good friend, you know, all of those things, I actually probably would have had a very different trajectory. But it, it changed my life, truthfully. It really changed the course because I began to, at that point, not officially, but at that point I really began to play with, wait a minute, wait a minute. This was, this was actually an accurate assessment of what was happening. And that was very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like we're we're taught to ignore the the symbol si- signals from our body, and to go with conditioning instead. Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. Conditioning, you know, trauma locks us out of the capacity to listen to the signals from our body because it locks us out of the present moment. Um, there just are so many different pieces that go on in in the world today that we most of us have to really purposefully, mindfully do the healing work that we have to do in order to get back to a place where we can hear these innate signals. I mean, we're born with them. <laughs> we are, and I'm, I'm looking forward to delving into that, but it's time for a short break. But before we pause, I'd like to tell you about an exciting upcoming provision for those interested in spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Path Home Shamanic Art School's Galactic Shamanism, Art of the Ancients, Key to Tomorrow, is a series of leading-edge online affordable classes designed to guide and support you and your family during these times of transition. They'll be coming soon. Suzanne and I will return shortly, so don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Suzanne Sherlock Drana, the author of Reclaiming Your Body, Healing from Trauma and Awakening to Your Body's Wisdom. Her website, healingfromthecore.com. Susanna, would you mind sharing with us uh, what your training is that, that uh, led you into the, on this path? <laughs> well, my, my training currently is that I teach um, craniosacral therapy for a living. I have, as well as having a private practice in it. For the last 30 years, I've worked for the Upledger Institute and taught craniosacral therapy. My undergraduate degree is in psychology. I never really went anything beyond my BA in psychology, though, but lots and lots of my own study and reading. And so the world of craniosacral therapy is probably one of the most elegant, um, exquisite forms of healing from trauma for the average person who wants to do body work, wants to include touch, healing touch 
to help reclaim the parts of themselves that they're locked out of. And so it's a beautiful, easy uh, partnership between what I teach in craniosacral therapy and what I have developed across the years in the Healing from the Core curriculum of really helping people understand their own personal energy field that lives within their body and how it is affected by what we think, by what we feel, by the lives we lead, and by the trauma that we have survived and all the things that make us who we are. Now, I know who Upledger is and what sacred cranial therapy is, mm-hmm. but some of our listeners may not. Would you mind going into it just a little bit? Yeah. Um, craniosacral therapy is a very light touch. It's done fully clothed, loose clothing, but it's not like massage where you're naked on the table with a sheet. You're actually fully clothed, and they, the person that's the practitioner is listening to your system body, mind, and spirit, to see where in your system things are blocked, locked, compressed. Um, Things can happen from birth trauma to car accidents, falls, surgeries, emotionally um, traumatic events. Many, many different things can cause the body to go into lockdown in certain areas in order to protect itself. It thinks it's protecting itself. But that's when the body locks down in that way, it actually locks us out of the present moment because we lose a clear sense of what's really happening. And craniosacral therapy is one of the, probably one of the most effective and elegant, I would say, forms of body work and efficient. It works really, really well for helping people begin to be able to feel who they are, reclaim the best parts of who they are, release trauma, and move on in their lives. It optimizes the brain and spinal cord functioning. And that's one of the key pieces. That when our brain and spinal cord is working well, almost everything else works much better too. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the all the signals get where they need to go, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so how do our bodies connect us to the rest of the natural world? Well, what I talk about in the book, every cell of who we are is actually signaling to us all the time. And in craniosacral therapy, we talk of it as about it as cellular intelligence, not like the phone cellular, but the cells of your body. We call it cellular intelligence or inner wisdom. And that the body, when things are healthy and open, is like a a radio transmitter. I mean, it actually receives information from deep inside of you and also outside of you. And you mentioned earlier in, in the introduction about one of your early teachers telling you what to bring in because he could feel something incoming in terms of weather. That's just one example of what the body actually can register. Um, that night when I was um, so rudely treated by my, my dear friend, I felt that there was something off about him and something not good was about, was impending. It was a, a, like a deep uneasiness in my gut. It wasn't worry. I wasn't, there was nothing in his tone, nothing in our conversation, nothing in the circumstances. In, that my logical mind could have identified as dangerous. And yet my gut knew that something was dangerous. That's a way that the body receives signals from the external world. Uh, the HeartMath Institute has now done research showing that the heart and the gut actually register incoming events or things about to come into your field long before you can visually see them, hear them, taste them, or smell them, mm-hmm. that the body registers it. I think right. this is wonderful, wonderful affirmation of things that my shamanic teachers have known, of course, you know, all of us that have done any level of shamanic training or energy work, we know that this is there. And so it's lovely now to have the research that says, yes, and here's why. Here's how yeah. it works. So, research is a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have chakras and esoteric bodies. How do they play in here? Well, your chakras are the vortices that, they're like train stations, only they get the train moving through your body um, better and better. And so they are a part, they're an important part of the energy field of the body, just as the the regular flow of of all chi, you know, in in the Chinese system would say, that chakras are the Vedic system that says, here's how energy flows through the body. Here are the train stations that really get it cooking, you know, from the the main seven chakras, from your root chakra to your crown chakra, and then all the minor chakras that are in every major organ and joint and 
you know, everywhere else in, in your system. Um, but they are the uh, part of what keeps the body flowing with energy. And by the way, when you have trauma in the body, it definitely diminishes the functioning of the chakras in that area of your body, just like it, it diminishes the function of the connective tissue, the vascular flow, the neurological flow, everything. Um, so trauma... Yeah, well, you know, is, drag, yeah. you know uh, uh, restriction causes drag. Drag wears things out, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As, so do the, you know, when we have the esoteric bodies and the chakras and all that stuff, we also have our sense of smell and some of it we register and some of it is beyond what we really take note of. We have vision, same sort of thing. We might be picking up something in a person's body language that we aren't conscious of. Yeah. Do, do all of these signals um, come together to give us that knowing that is registered in the gut, do you think? It could very well be. And I think there are even things beyond what we're taking in with our five senses that the gut is picking up. And we don't, um, we don't actually know exactly how the gut and heart do it. We just have watched on the, on the screen as the heart or gut, or the torso, I just say it's the torso, somewhere in the torso, that it registers a ch an incoming change and a response. Before, and this can be something that's outside of the room. It's outside of hearing. It's something that is not anywhere. It's not that, you know, like you and I, if we're sitting with someone, we are registering things at an unconscious level that are visually going on with the person sitting across from us. There might be a smell that tells us something that we're not actually consciously registering. There can be, you know, there are many things like that. But this knowing that the gut has is actually something beyond that which is mm -hmm. really fascinating. So, but my, my big deal is that the whole system is meant to work together. So this, whatever this is, uh, Stephen Porges calls the internal body knowing interoception. And mm -hmm. I call this outside body knowing exteroception. You know, <laughs> it just basically mm -hmm. means you pick up what's going on out there around you. If you're listening, if you're listening, you pick it up. And, you know, if you have trauma, if you're rushed, if you're too focused, these are things that keep you from actually hearing the signals as they're incoming. Right. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, this listening concept. We're taught to be distracted from life rather than just really center and listen. But it seems like a lot of us have been driven out of our bodies. What causes that? You know, this is a, this is a dance. I, you know, I just finished teaching a four-day class up in, in Buenos Aires about the process of what happens to us, and how to come home to yourself again. It is partially cultural. It is partially educational. It is partially religious. It's partially trauma history, family history. It's the boundaries and the trauma that happened to your parents and how that information is transmitted to you nonverbally or verbally um, through your growing up years. So all of your experiences, from your education to your your family life, to your religion, to your, um, the culture that you grow up in, all of these, for the most part, drive us out of our bodies and into our minds, into our left brains, really, to be honest. Yeah. If it isn't so, logical, if it isn't logical and reasonable, it's not valid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we lost a lot when we went there, didn't we? So yeah. what's, what's the relationship between trauma and frequency? Well... <laughs> This is, this could be a whole other radio show, my dear, <laughs> because and I'm I I'm going to use how I define frequency, and I hope it's how you define frequency. Um, the healthy a healthy resonance in a body in in your body or my body uh, has a hum to it that is something that feeds your cells that causes you to your cells to regenerate, uh, causes health to be the outcome versus diminishment of health, um, the resonance, and I'm going to take that as what you mean by frequency, the resonance of health is one thing. When someone experiences trauma, the body literally shrinks and pulls it in and encapsulates it and tightens down on it so that the rest of the body can continue to function around. In other words, it encapsulates, encapsulates the dissonance? Yes, yes. And there's definitely a dissonance that happens with trauma. And so it takes it, encapsulates it, and holds on to it. And there are certain things that actually cause the body to 
encapsulate it and hold it and not end up just dissipating it over time. Um, one of them is the emotional matrix that's going on at the time that the trauma occurs. If I skin my knee, I fall down and skin my knee, and the people around me laugh at me and I end up feeling ashamed, how clumsy I am, how could that have happened, how I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, then that's a lot more likely to stay locked in my knee than if I slip and fall and skin my knee and my friends rush over and pick me up and they get me help and they, you know, they get me to a doctor and make sure my knee isn't broken and three pieces and, you know, and, and I get what I need in order to heal. That's much more likely. It's, that's a traumatic event, but it's a, a lot more likely to heal and heal at a fairly rapid speed, by the way, all, all other things being the same, because the emotional matrix was one of love and caring at the time. Is, so am I making it- sense? You are. And so, so does this um, various locked and stored traumas, does that then compromise the overall frequency of the body? Absolutely. And, and it does because then the body almost has to move around those areas. Okay? So, so and we, we actually do a lot with this in craniosacral therapy. We call them energy cysts. That was Upledger's term for it. And Same thing as miasms? I, I, you know, I don't know the exact definition of a miasm, but mm-hmm. um, it, I, not, I know that Upledger didn't know the definition of a miasm. So it might be similar, but I don't really know. Okay. But an energy cyst is encapsulated energy, you know, chaotic photo, um, energy in, in its raw form that the body hangs on to so that it won't disrupt everything else. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's a, it actually makes a lot of sense because if we didn't have this capacity to do this, the things that happen to us in life would just really get to be overwhelming pretty quickly. Right. And that's really Well, we're why going the to body have to pick this, up yeah. with this um, after this quick break, and it's time for another short pause. Suzanne and I will return to our discussion on the other side, so don't go away. We're coming to you through the Exxon Broadcast Network. You don't want to miss the other fine shows and hosts on xzbn.net. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Your resource for creative solutions in a changing world, the science of magic.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Suzanne Sherlock Derna, the author of Reclaiming Your Body, Healing from Trauma, and Awakening to Your Body's Wisdom. Her website, healingfromthecore.com. Suzanne, we have ascertained <laughs> that trauma is indeed stored in the body. And now I have to give you a little bit of my history. I've, I have been a body worker. And um, there was a form that was used um, called integrative at that time, whereby we could access trauma in the body and the person then would emote like crazy. However, what I, what I witnessed was every time you hit that same spot, they would do it all over again. So it wasn't really clearing. Can you speak Mm -hmm. to this? Well, yeah, this this is very interesting. And actually, I'm I'm just curious as to how many years ago you were doing this kind of work. Oh, a long time ago. I I graduated from the Boulder College of Massage, and it was when I was going to the college that that I experienced this. And it's like, really? Well, and so I will tell you, you know, that when Upledger, you know, first started investigating all of this, in fact people's body would go into a particular position or you'd get energy in a particular area of an energy cyst and they would emote and you know they would cry or they would laugh or they would tell the story and whatever it was and 
most of the time it was healing, but there was this quality of, in, in many cases, of it not really helping so much. And in some cases, it could actually be re-traumatizing. Mm-hmm. And what we now know about how trauma works is that you have to have new resources. The person has to feel like they have a container. They have more of themselves to hold with love and compassion, the parts of themselves that they're locked out of. They have to feel as though the therapist themselves is grounded and very present and holding a space that is capable of letting the energy of that trauma dissipate and release without re-traumatizing them. And that is a whole um, art, if you will, that now is really being talked about a lot in somatic psychology and the work of Peter Levine and Dan Siegel and Bezel van der Kolk. All of these men are working very much with this whole concept of how can we help people release trauma without being re-traumatized by it and do so in a way that's very effective. And the somato-emotional release process that Upledger taught is, has been refined across the years as well. And it also is an extremely effective way of helping the body to release trauma in a way that isn't overwhelming and that the person can integrate it. So it sounds like training, training, training. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <if laughs> There's no there, replacement for it, right? <laughs> no, there exactly. really isn't. There really isn't. And also... <clears throat> the other thing that we've done, you know, the, those of us that teach for Upledger, is we have continued our own studies um, about trauma and all of the latest research on trauma and what happens in the brain and what happens in the body and how the two connect and all of that. So it's an exciting time to be alive in terms of helping people release trauma because there is a lot more known now and a lot more effective ways of doing it than what we were originally taught 30 years ago, Gwilda. I don't know how long ago you were taught that, but... I I ignore it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So does the kind of trauma dictate where it's stored in the body? No. Um, It it really... No. You can have have someone who has um, a sense of uh, betrayal that's registered in one person's gut... And the next person, it might be in their neck, in their throat, and they, they can't speak, or, or, and they, they have pent-up tears. Somebody else might have it in their left shoulder because they fell on that shoulder when they were betrayed by whoever it was. Maybe they fell and someone was supposed to catch them and didn't, right? So, you see, so it could be in any one of those areas. And, you know, it's the one bone to pick that I have with systems that say, well, if something's locked in your knee, it's always about... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Agency. Your ability to, to very simplistic, yes. stand up for yourself. Now, it might be. I mean, those can get you in the territory, that, that kind of information. But each person's knowing, and, and trauma history is going to register in a different way in the body. And one of the things I talk about in Reclaiming Your Body is no one can really judge the trauma that you or I have been through and say or judge it and say, oh, that wasn't a big deal, or oh, my God, how are you still walking around? You know, <laughs> we, there really isn't, because it's how we register trauma, how it affects us, how we hold it is individual to each one of us. Now, I had a very interesting experience, uh, again, back in school, uh, mm-hmm. well, in massage school, I've been to other schools, um, that they were working on my lower back where I had adhesions because I'd had back surgery. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly accessed memories of exactly what was going on during the surgery, what the doctors were saying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. So what can you tell us about that? So just because we're asleep doesn't mean our body is. What what can you tell us about body memory like that? That that is absolutely true. In fact, one of Upledger's most famous examples that when he was very first starting was a woman whose pelvis would not heal. He could not get, and she had had uh, a hysterectomy. And he's working on her pelvis. You know, they're, they're doing a session. She's dialogue, and all of a sudden, she reaches over, grabs her purse beside the table, and smacks him with it. And says, <laughs> that's for that doctor. When he told me that my, my uterus didn't matter and, and I wasn't going to have kids anyway, so you might as well just yank it out. Oof. And, I mean, really. And she remembered, and this was said to her under 
under anesthesia. And I have actually seen this again and again and again. Not only what is said, but the fear in the room. If some screw-up happens and, you know, people are racing around trying to fix an artery that's, that's now bleeding out or, you know, whatever it is, that also goes into the body and gets locked in place because your, your field is basically wide open when you're under general anesthesia. Right, and that's yeah. one of the shamanic things that I do is for my clients if they're going to go into surgery is to create yeah. a container for them during that time. You know, and the more we learn about this, the more we realize, boy, we're sure missing the boat in some areas, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So is, bo is body trauma stored in our DNA and passed down genetically, if it's you not know, clear? It, it actually is, and again, there has been recent research. Now, this is something that I would tell you I've known because of my clinical outcomes in practice. Mm -hmm. that, um, but now they're actually doing research with mice and their DNA, which is exactly like our DNA, um, that trauma gets passed down and affects the, the behavior of mice even when they have different mothers. Mm -hmm. so interesting. It's a really interesting piece. I, the, the place where it really came home to me was a number of years ago I had a client who kept having these bizarre this sense of fear and memories about um, mass murders or something, and I and I, I was kind of scratching my head and thinking, weird. And I, you know, I kept asking her, what were you? I mean, it 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 felt like she was having memories of the gas chambers in the in the camps in the desert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yet she was a good Presbyterian girl. Yeah. You know, I've run into this, that genetic memory. Right. Well, here's what was interesting. Her grandmother came to this country after the war or during the war and, and somehow, and then changed religion, did not want to have anything to do with the Jewish faith because of what it did to her family. And, and never said a word to anyone. No one in the family knew, except this woman knew something had gone on because it got passed down. And here's here's the fun part. Think about this, Gwilda. This woman, it was her grandmother, right? This woman was a seed and in her mother's ovary in and her mother was in her grandmother when all of these things happened. Okay, oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just think about yeah. that for a moment. Yeah. An egg, and she was an egg in her mother's Ovaries. Ovary when mother her mother yeah. was an egg in her grandmother's. Yeah. Well, that, that opens another whole rabbit hole of why the lineage, right. uh, so many people looked at the uh, matriarchal lineage versus the patriarchal lineage right. uh, way back when. Yeah. yeah. So what is the language of the body? You know, the language of the body is varied and rich and deep. Um, our dreams often speak about what's happening in the body, trying to give us metaphors and symbols and images, um, sensations, felt senses, inner visions about things that suddenly flash on your screen. Some people hear things um, that is important for them to hear. Um, sometimes there's just a knowing about something that you can't really put your finger on or put words to. But the body speaks to us in a thousand different ways all the time. So how can we learn to decipher what it's saying? You slow down and listen. And and honestly, that's what the book is about. There's there's, um, there's a great, actually, there's a great quote, if I can read it to you. It probably says it the most succinctly of, of everything. Um, it says, your relationships with other people throughout your lifetime, with your parents, spouses, children, friends, and teachers, will shift as time passes and situations change. As long as you are alive, however, your body is always with you. It's so beneficial to have a strong, deep, intimate relationship with your unique physical self. Your mm -hmm. body is designed to guide you, keep you safe, and bring you full vitality and pleasure. It is the vehicle through which you create and manifest your thoughts and dreams into reality. In this book, we will discover how establishing and nurturing a healthy relationship with your body will allow you to reclaim lost parts of yourself, tap into your body's wisdom, and better navigate your life. Mm. You know, we view our body in this culture as lacking. It's either too heavy, too short, 
you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do those negative thoughts towards our physical body, what impact do they have? Well, they definitely have an impact of creating tension in the body. If I don't like the size of my belly, my belly is going to be holding a level of tension all the time. If I think my face isn't pretty enough, or if I, you know, if there are parts of myself that I, that I abhor, um, it, it can very, very definitely affect the tension level in my body and the level of fight flight that I'm walking around with at a low level all the time, you know, being hyper vigilant so no one else notices these things about myself. Yeah. Do you, do you think that also the, the frequency of that self-loathing uh, starts to manifest physically? We start looking like what we, what we think we look like. Oh, sure. Absolutely. No, I'm, I completely agree with you there. Yes. And, and, and by the way, it always does so. But with each person, it happens in a slightly different way. So you, you, know, you can't really say, well, if you were beaten as a child, it's always going to mean your shoulders are up around your ears and your neck is short. But for a lot of people, that might be true, okay? But for someone else, it might mean it might end up as a scoliosis, or it might end up as a. Um, and not all scoliosis are mean that, you know. But it's it's um, there are many different ways that the body responds by contracting and being tense and hypervigilant and and not functioning as well as it might otherwise do. Mm. Mm. Well, it's going to be another one of those magic moments that we need to take a break. Suzanne and I will be back shortly, so don't leave us now. This is the Science of Magic, your resource to altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric working to create common ground for the betterment of our world. Join our email family to receive our amazing topic-driven episode collections at thescienceofmagic.net. The Science of Magic is proud to be produced by Realma McConnell Media Company out of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. What's up in your world? Email me at the info at thescienceofmagic.net and suggest a topic that's on your mind. You're probably not the only one interested. Our guest this hour is Su- Suzanne Skurlark Darna, the author of Reclaiming Your Body. Her website, healingfromthecore.com. Susanna, there's some really interesting information being uncovered about the heart and its true function. What can you tell us about the wisdom of the heart? Well, the heart is actually one of those wonderful parts of the body that most people recognize has wisdom. You know, there's, um, you see it a lot in the language, you know, when we speak about all the little idioms that people use about their heart. And that's, this is probably one of the most uh, frequently 
understood and listened to. And the piece that I really added to the wisdom of the heart is the idea that, number one, that we all know that the heart has to do with things like love and compassion and gratitude. These are things that have been known for eons. But in Chinese medicine, and also I have found this to be true uh, when I'm working with people, the heart is the seat of our inspiration. It's like the fire. They say someone's heart's on fire about something in, in particular. And when our fire goes out, you know, people get depressed and depleted. And so this inspiration quality is a biggie when we are talking about the wisdom of the heart. The other piece that's very, very important about the heart is that most of us that are in healing professions, healthcare professions, helping professions, caregivers, we, we naturally pour our love out into the world. And I would call that radiating from the front of your heart. That you, and people will often say about people that are in healthcare, gosh, I just love her. what a warm-hearted person Gwilda is, or just how big-hearted Suzanne is, whatever it is. And that's a, that is a reflection of the amount that I am radiating from the front of my heart. But my capacity to really do what I do long-term depends on my capacity to also live from and be embodied in my deep heart, the back of my heart, because that's where the well of self-love comes. And if I take care of myself and I love myself at a soul level, I'm not talking about hedonistically, selfishly loving and, and, and grabbing my part. No, I'm talking about the deep love for who we are at a soul level. When that is lived, then the love we pour out into the rest of the world has an, is naturally refilled constantly. And there is a reflection in, the, um, in, in how we give to the world by the deep heart saying, gosh, we're feeling a little depleted right now. Let's slow down and take care a little better subs, of ourselves and so that we can go out and give to the world in a better way. And when we don't have contact with the deep heart. We don't have any way of knowing until we're fried, you know, that we've, we are not really operating at a level that long-term we can continue and to be able to do what it is we all love to do. I think it's called <laughs> compassion fatigue, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, um, a lot of my uh, indigenous teachers spoke of balancing your shields, and it was a heart issue, and it's unconditional love of self balanced with unconditional love of other. Right. And um, and another you can't, way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same thing, isn't it? It's the yeah. same thing. What about when a person becomes brokenhearted? What what does that indicate? Mm. You know, that would be an energy cyst in the area of the heart. Sense of betrayal, sense of um, abandonment, sense of pain, uh, sense of not being loved in the way that you wanted to be loved, um, not belonging. You know, all of these things can register as a brokenheartedness. And that then becomes something that needs to be healed in order for you. And, and things like this can actually keep people from being in their deep, their deep heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so crippling, isn't it? Yeah. When, when, you, when you're holding that kind of damage, all the flow stops and you can't connect with yourself or with other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you speak of six wisdom areas of the body. What are they? Mm -hmm. Well, the six that I talk about in the book, I had to stop somewhere, Gwilda. I mean, it was <laughs> truthfully, the, the, every cell in the body has its own story of wisdom, right? So, right. But these are the six main neighborhoods that I find when I'm working with people and, and thousands and thousands of students later. So the heart is one of them. And as I said, that's the one that most people actually recognize. It's most commonly understood. The gut is another one. And this is also something we're seeing a lot of research on right now. So the gut is, is not so much of a stranger as, uh, in terms of being a wisdom area. The pelvis, the engine of the body, that core root chakra area is another wisdom area. Our bones, deep in the, the cellular matrix, the innermost part of our bones, and, and our bones in their entirety hold a, a wisdom that's very important. Our feet and legs hold wisdom that is activated when we get them moving. And then, of course, the brain, 
mostly we're talking the integration of the prefrontal cortex with the rest of the midbrain and the back of the brain and the rest of the body. So all of these are wisdom areas that we need to be integrating together. We're supposed to be in all of them, not just one or the other, but we're actually meant in order to operate optimally. We are meant to live in every cell of who we are, and every cell is meant to be communicating with every other cell. And yet we're so blocked out at this point. Mm-hmm. How, what, what do you recommend as a person's, person's first step to start reclaiming their body? Yeah. Well, I have, it's interesting, in the book, I have actually, I have a nine question, um, it's called the body intelligence quotient, or BQ, where it's nine simple questions so that you can actually bring awareness, number one, of what is my current relationship with my body. Some things, when you take this BQ, this little nine question questionnaire thing, you will find areas where you go, yeah, I knew that. And then other areas where you go, whoa, geez, that's right. Oh, I didn't realize that. So being aware of where you're starting out is important first. Then the next thing I teach people is how to be aware not only of what they think of their, themselves and their body, but how it feels on the inside to be you. So there are audio recordings, I call them explorations, that help people begin to tune in, slow down, and tune in internally, inside their skin, to what it feels like to be you in this moment. And there's one for, you're just, how do you feel about being who you are before you do anything else? And then there's one that helps people to ground and fill themselves with nurturing sensation. I call that my core embodiment process. And then I have one that is the really, really golden nugget of it, which is how to hold the areas that we're locked out of with love and compassion and no judgment. And that I call healing the internal resistance to life. And then beyond those three explorations, there are actually chapters on each of these six wisdom areas that have their own exploration that goes with it to help people embody more deeply in the inspiration in the heart, in that gut knowing of your gut, in the power of the pelvis, in that capacity to sort things out that happens when you activate your feet and legs, in the clarity and wisdom of your bones, the steadiness of your bones. You know, all of these things... There, there are actual explorations that go, and they're, they're free downloads that when you buy the book, there's a password, and you go to my website and, and work with it. And it's really helpful because it gives people a step-by-step-by-step process to work with, no matter what other traditions you may work with, no matter what your religion. It doesn't matter. These are exercises that work for everyone. Yeah, that's so great. It's great. You know, one. Yeah, we have to have, we have to have a starting place, and I, yeah. I thank you so much for providing that. You know, there's another subject I'd like to get into a little bit with you. You know, there are a lot of us are starting to recognize that we're empathic, and I think a lot of caregivers are fairly empathic, mm-hmm. and in in that they take on the frequency of the other person's body and experience the other person's trauma in their personal body. Mm-hmm. Can can we get stuck to the darn thing? You know, we sure can. And honestly, shamanically. That was the way, and and metaphysically, that was the traditional way of healing. You know, you would go into the tent of someone who was ill. You would suck the illness out of their gut, out of their heart. Um, You would go out into nature for a couple of days and off-gas it, you know, like get rid of it if you were the medicine (laughs) person. And while the tribe took care of your family for you. Well, we can't do that anymore, Gwilda. We don't have time. There's just no, that model doesn't work anymore. So we have to have and be using, and this is actually, this has been one of my bandwagons for years. We have to be operating from a model that says, yes, I'm empathic. And I actually talk about this a lot in the book as well. I feel and sense what's going on for people around me, but I don't take it into my body. I stay full enough, my container, my energy reservoirs are full enough that if something starts to cross my boundary, I register it, but it doesn't cross the boundary unless I give it the yes. Okay? Yeah, All right. yeah you know, one of yeah. the things that I've always, uh, being a deep empath myself, one of the things that I've always done is take knowledge of it, thank my body for the information, uh-huh. and then specifically ask my body to go ahead and release it. I got, I got the message. Right, right. Is and this I, what you're talking about here? Yeah, it is. And I've tried to figure out a model. Uh, it's interesting we're having this conversation because this is probably one of the edges where I haven't been able to get the verbiage to exactly fit. 
I feel things like a shadow in my own system, almost like sonar bouncing mm-hmm. off the mm-hmm. system. And then with that model, I don't even have to ask my body to release it. It just never gets it never gets in. in. I register you know, it. Yeah. I'm afraid we're out of time, Suzanne. This has just been so interesting, and thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, you're so welcome, Gwilda. I've had a lovely, lovely time. It's lovely been a pleasure. Time. Great. Our guest this hour has been Suzanne Sherlock Dron- <laughs> Talk, talk about messing up a name. Durana, the author of Reclaiming Your Body, Healing from Trauma, and Awakening to Your Body's Wisdom. Her website, healingfromthecore.com. This has been the Science of Magic. Join our email family to be the first to receive our thought provoking, topic driven episode collections at thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge and comforted with love as you awake to the wisdom within. Searching through the night.